Uh, I know I'm trying to think. Well, sometimes people had you sign like the dash of their dashboard of their car or the hood of their car. You know, things like this is kind of odd. Um, you know, obviously body parts. People ask you to sign all kinds of body parts. Um, I can't think of anything that was that odd, to be honest with you, because we're talking about KISS fans. <laughs> I mean, really, KISS fans will have you do any, any, anything, so nothing surprises me anymore. When I, one thing about KISS I always tell people, never say never and don't ever be surprised, because KISS fans are their own unique breed, and there's nobody like, uh, nobody like them except maybe Trekkies, Star Trek fans. <laughs> it's true. Actually, the one guy, is anybody a Star Trek fan? Yeah. Yeah, because the one guy, Chekhov, he's my neighbor. He lives right around the corner from me. The guy that played on the original, the Russian guy that looked like Davy Jones from the Monkees. He's my neighbor. Anybody that's a Star Trek fan, when I tell them, they always go, oh, let me see, show me where he lives. They, th they think it's great. I'm like, I don't think, you know, I wasn't a Star Trek fan, so to me, it's no big deal. He's just my neighbor. What? Walter Koenig, yeah. Yeah, that's him. You're Who's right. next? This guy. You. No. Uh, it took a long time before uh, he let you do a uh, bet. I didn't have it. No, that was just for TV. <laughs> now, but is there a possibility that you do a song of your own like All for the Glory? Instead of bet. Well, actually, it was Doc McGee's idea for me to sing Beth. That, he, Doc's the one that said we should do Beth. I, I never really cared about it. I, honestly, I don't care about drum solos. I don't care if I sing. That's not... I do... If they say, hey, do you want to sing? Yeah, sure, fine. They say, we don't want you to sing? That's fine, too. I, don't, I never care about this kind of thing. I don't have an ego about this. But um, in all honesty, Doc McGee is the one that said, last year when we were on tour, Doc said, I think you guys should do Beth. And we kept saying, yeah, whatever. And then finally, Doc said, no, I think you guys should do it at the end of the, you know. So it was not Gene and Paul's idea or my idea. It was actually Doc's idea. Managers are supposed to make sometimes these, make these type of decisions because that's why they're there, to try to tell you what they think is good for you or not good for you. Who came but up with We're the not going to do all for the glory because we're already doing a new record. Now, if the song I sing on the new record, if they think they want to have me sing it in the show, then we'll decide this when we get to that point. Who came up with the bazooka? That was my idea. <laughs> that was. I said, Gene, I, I think, I, how about if I do this? He said, that's a great idea. So one of the guys found, one of the techs found this old bazooka from, I don't know where he got it. And uh, I actually come, came up with some new ideas for the next show, but I can't tell you because we have to wait and see if we're going to do it. And then, of course, you want it to be a surprise. But we're always thinking of ideas to try to make the show cooler and you know bigger or better who's next you what do you enjoy more rehearsing for a new album or the tour what do i enjoy more rehearsing for a new, new album? i don't like rehearsing <laughs> honestly i don't i don't i like i don't even practice anymore i i don't i don't mean that in a bad way it's just that i enjoy playing live and playing concerts that's to me what i enjoy because that's when it's about the chemistry and the, the, you know, the audience, that's what gives you the energy, like electricity. And th there's something special and unique, like, like Paul calls it electric church, and he's right. It's really like being in church with this congregation, and the real electricity is not from the amplifiers, it's from the people. And the more people is what, it's like power, it feeds you. It, there is really no high like, high like that. That's why I always wondered why people need to do drugs because to me it's like the best high is really playing for people. There's nothing like it. You know, it's such an adrenaline rush and it's, it's a very kind of unique, special feeling. I wish everybody could experience how it is to be on stage and do that because it's, it's quite unique. Who's next? Somebody on this side, maybe? You, the girl. The kid. Which one, the little Peter? Yes. <laughs> I think little, little Peter has a, little Eric has a, a gift for you. Oh, he does? Oh, really? <laughs> What's his name? 
Moj? Mos. Mos. Okay. Thank you. Should I open it? He's being all shy now. Don't worry, I won't bite you. He doesn't like being being attention. Oh, look at that. That's cool. <laughs> Says drum hero with animal. Thank you. That's very cool. Thank you. That's cool of you. Thank you, Val. <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> Who's got another question? Anybody here? You, the girl over there. What am I doing in Europe? I'm right here talking to you right now. <laughs> Why am I, I'm sorry? Why am I here? Because I came here for this Kiss Expo. That's why I'm here. Then I'm going, there's another one in, in Italy on uh, Friday near Mo Mo Modena. Modena, where the Ferrari factory is, right? Maserati factories. I went to, before to the Ferrari factory a couple years ago, took a tour. And then don't you have some ESP stuff after that? Yeah, but then I'm also, Bruce, Kulik and John Karabi, they were in um, Spain on Friday night and I think last night in uh, Helsinki, Finland. And then we're going to go, I'm going to meet them tomorrow in Switzerland and then we're going to rehearse a little bit and we're going to do a few ESP, like unplugged kind of acoustic shows as a trio in Switzerland, Italy, I think uh, Norway, in Poland or something like this. And uh, so that's where we're going to be. And... Uh, so basically we all came over, Bruce and John were doing some KISS Expos and I was doing some since we're both going to be in Europe at the same time we said let's do a few acoustic shows. So that's it. And then I go home and get back to work on the KISS record and then get ready for next year. What? How come you're not playing in Holland with the ESP? Because it, it just didn't work out that way. We only had, we only had so much time. I mean. Actually, Paul wanted to be in the studio working, but I already had planned to come over to do this expo here. So um, when I get back, everybody's going to get ready and, and we want to get back to work and finish the record. Mm -hmm. There's only so much time, but we're thinking about maybe coming back in um, maybe in February or March and do some more ESP shows because Chuck, our bass player, he's been on tour with Alice Cooper. He wasn't available. So we have to, it's very difficult when to, to get four people that are in different bands to try to come together to do things. It's not that easy. So we're only able to play once in a while. Is it something I said? <laughs> Who's next? You. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is, it's multi generational, and Kiss is when a band's been around for so long. To you have to remember the band the way it is now is. I mean, Tommy's been in the band since 2003 for eight years now. So for any younger generation, just like in the 80s when it was Bruce Kulick and Eric Carr, like Anim on Animal Eyes or Asylum, that's their version of Kiss that they grew up with. So for young kids, Kiss the way Kiss is, this is their version of Kiss. I mean, when I saw Kiss, I was 15, 16 years old. It was the original band. That was my version of Kiss growing up. So I understand how that is, you know. No. No. Uh, I mean, you know, 
I'll put it, you know, it's a lot of times people have a different point of view of how they see things, but I think if you really look back on the history, um, when they, you know, they did try different makeup. They tried, you know, Eric Carr wearing the fox and tried, uh, you know, Vinnie Vincent being the act, but you want to know something? Those were not successful tours for the band. A lot of people don't realize that Creatures of the Night, that was the worst tour for Kiss ever in their history. The worst, att the worst attendance ever. You know, so a lot of people, they, for, they don't know this. Most people are too young to even know that. That was not a good time for them. Paul told me that when they would go on, he said, when we went on tour for Creature of the Night, he goes, Eric, we would pull into the parking lot of a big coliseum, he goes, and there would be no cars there. He goes, and I thought, he goes, I honestly thought, that's it, it's over. That was 1980. He said, I thought the band was over because it, there would be like maybe 2,000 people at the show in a 20,000 seat arena. But, you know, you got to remember, Kiss has gone up and down and up and down for its whole career. So, like, they decided, we tried doing other characters and other makeup, and it didn't work. There's a reason everybody recognizes those four makeup designs. And that's, you know... Of course. I don't think you're going to ever see Kiss without makeup on the tour again, other than, like, the Kiss Cruise, this was a special thing. But you're... You know, this is what people recognize and identify with the band, is Kiss in makeup. And you have to admit, it's some, it is something that's unique and special when you go to see Kiss. Let's do somebody else. You over there. Well, the, you, know, it's, it's, you know, I always tell people, being in a band is a very unique thing. It's not a job. You can't call in sick. You know, you, know, you know, most people have a job if they feel sick, if you have the flu and you're throwing up, you stay in bed, right? In this band, you don't get to call in sick. I've, I've never missed a show in my life. I've, I've played shows even being, th imagine this, when you're been in, in bed with the flu, sweating, throwing up, I get up and go on stage and play. I've played being that sick, no matter what. So it's something that, you know, you have to treat it like very, you know, I know I'm in a very unique uh, situation getting to do what I do for a living. Getting to play drums for a living is a very, I think it's an honor, but it's also a very special thing. And I, and it's a gift. So I don't take advantage of that or I don't, I don't take it for granted, I should say. And I realize you have to play no matter what. And, um, the motivation is, is knowing that it's a special thing that I get to do. And to me, once you get on stage, no matter how bad you feel or how sick or if you have problems in your personal life, that special moment on stage when the adrenaline kicks in, that is, a, like I said earlier, that's a special high. And um, that's the motivation. You, you know, they always say you spend 22 hours of the day preparing for that two hours on stage. So even though it's sometimes you know, changing time zones, a lot of crazy travel, being sick, all those things. Once you're on stage, it makes it worth it. Yeah. Who's next? Next question. What? Come on here. Talking to the microphone. Uh, we have an August or a kiss wedding uh, with my <laughs> husband, Jean. And we thanks for your gifts. We have uh, an invitation with your sign. And here is a paper for you and the Kiss Boys from our wedding. It was a tribute for Kiss. Yes. How long ago was this? August. In August. Oh, it says right here, August. <laughs> August 16th. Is this the day you got married, August 16th? Oh. This was on Kiss Online as well. Are those your wedding rings? Oh, cool. Did you have those made special? These rings? Did you have this made special? Are they gold or platinum? Gold? What? Gold. Gold, okay. That's what, great. Was that the question or is there anything else? She just wanted to present you the report on, on their uh, Kiss wedding. No question. So, anybody else have a question? Is this from your wedding, all these people? They're all dressed in makeup also? Oh, you see that, all these people? How come you have a violin? <laughs>